Hi, I'm Midnight Mule. Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL and I'm recording this video like about a day too late. So <laughs> hopefully some people will find it interesting. I'll find it interesting. This is about what happened in game week 11 and what I'm doing for game week 12. But it's more than just that because I also look at the Midnight Mule FPL League and I look at the Content Creators League and I'll explain what some of my decisions were. And to be fair, we've only had two of the 10 game so far so there's still a lot to play for now i got everything ready for this video nearly and i was intending to record it last night and possibly get it out during the games but i was feeling tired after working all day and i decided i would just leave it to the morning so now i'm trying desperately hard to get it all recorded before work and i'll probably have to edit it at lunchtime and then put it up so it's a bit like a uh, i don't know if you call them vlogs or video logs but i like when I find a new content creator, I will go back and look at their old videos and see how they did and then check the results and see how accurate they were because I find that sort of thing interesting rather than just keep believing what they're saying. So absolutely, not just me, but other content creators, you might find it fun to look back at their old videos and see what they used to say. Anyway, back to this rather late uh, Game Week 12 and Game Week 11 review. So starting with the Midnight Mule FPL League, top scorer this week was Jamal Agbolahan. Sorry if I got the name wrong. And I'm going to try and say the name, which is Buluwatifuri. And that would definitely be wrong. There they are. They're in 19th place. But they got 66 points. The average this week globally was 46 points. And their team is their Saring goal, 14 points. That was excellent. And then Newcastle defence got another 14 points with Trippier and Shah. And then just a sprinkling of points throughout. Kane and Saka with 9. Andreas 5. Saliba 5. Of course, they've got the problem now. I've not looked at their team for this week, game week 12, but just on the screen here, they've got five players that you know are not playing. And then on the bench, Zinchenko won't be playing. Luis Diaz is out. So I don't know if they're going to be taking lots of hits or if they would have played their wild their free hit. We'll have to see what happens there. And they actually brought in Saka and Firmino and Saliba and took out Martinelli, Mitrovic and Trent. Obviously, we were told Trent was going to be injured for quite a while and he ended up coming on the pitch. So that might actually bite this team a little bit. But anyway, well done on getting top score for game week 11. Top overall in the league at the moment is Stephen Henderson with Easy, currently on 687 points. They got 50 points this week. This is their team. So they've got the Madsen issue to deal with. They've got Martinelli, Cancelo and Haaland, who obviously aren't playing game week 12. But they played Solanke, who got 12 points. Mitrovic 7, Pope 6, Perisic 8. Perisic's a very interesting choice. I'll talk about him later if I remember. They brought in Trossard, which was a popular gamble. I never got in Trossard. But what do I know? Stephen's way ahead of me in the league, so <laughs> you should be listening to him, not me. And on the bench, he had Andreas, Trippier and James and Ward, but the keeper didn't matter. So obviously in hindsight, it would have been good to play Trippier. I like Trippier and personally I think I would tend to always play Trippier over a lot of other people but like I said he's higher than me in the league so you don't want to listen to me and they brought in Trossard and Webster and took out De Bruyne and Emerson. For myself I'm down in 13th I only got 37 points for game week 11 that's okay bad game weeks happen <laughs> this is my team my top scorer was eight with Perisic isn't that great <laughs> it really wasn't good i Brought in Vardy when they were at home, when Leicester were at home to Nottingham Forest, because I used to live near, near Leicester, and I thought it'd be a lot of fun to have Vardy playing against Forest, and if he did well, it'd be a bit of a bit of a kick for me. And I said, because I only want to be in the, I'm aiming for the top two and a half percent globally, I can afford to take one or two silly punts like that. Completely didn't work out, but like I said, I had fun. I've now moved Vardy on, but we get to Vardy later. So very poor week for me. Uh, Absolutely deserve getting a bad score, though, because my team was a bit rough. <laughs> it, it was the Vardy that made all the difference, I think. And on the bench, I had Mitrovic, Smith and Dunk and Ward. Now, I was always going to play Edison over Ward, so don't feel bad about that. Mitrovic, I was, I was expecting him to probably not play and be a minute's risk. But had I played Mitrovic, then I would have had Billing on the bench and Billing got five points. So benching Mitrovic only actually cost me two points. So I got 37 overall. Game week rank is just inside the 9 million. And overall, I'm just inside the 1.3 million. But we've got a long way to go. I'm not the least bit nervous. 
that's fine. I've I got a red arrow, of course. So I've got red, two greens, and a red in the last four weeks. Now, the Content Creators League, to be part of this, you have to contact FPL Game Week directly, and you have to have like 10,000 followers. So I'm a long way from being able to join this league. But if you go to their website, you can see where you would appear in their league if you are in there. So top of the league at the moment is Ross, FPL Raptor. He's someone who's a lot of fun to listen to. He's on 734 points. Someone else who I listen to regularly is Harry, FPL Harry. He's up in fourth. So it's fun watching those two battle it out and seeing their comments on Twitter, etc. I'm all the way down in 49th if I was in this table. So that's me there with my special hat on. I've not got my hat on. It's because I'm not doing a captaincy choice. <laughs> there we go. There's the hat. How's that? Goes nicely with the colour of the T-shirt. Uh, so I am above Bruno, who's someone very interesting to listen to. Well, I, I find him interesting. He's got excellent sound quality. I know I said that before, but I think sound's really important. Um, I'm now three points behind FPL, mate. And I'm 10 points behind Andy, another couple of people that I like to watch online because it's good entertainment, I guess. So all those people on the screen, even me, would be people that I think are worth watching online if you've got enough time because just for the entertainment value, I guess. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting to say about subscribers, even now I forget. So currently got 173, very grateful for those. The last video about my team, that got 192 views. Although to be fair, only about 30% watched the whole thing, but that's okay. 32 likes, uh, 15 comments. So I'm very grateful for likes, for comments, for people subscribing, any of that you fancy doing is very much appreciated. Now my transfers, something I massively disagree with with other content creators, so you want to stop listening to them on this and listen to me instead. They keep going on about not taking hits or it's a big thing if you take a hit, forget it. <laughs> you can take hits and it's completely worth it. So I started tracking my hits to demonstrate this. So game week eight, I took out Fafana, Lavia, Diaz and Darwin and brought in Trippier, Madison, Bowen and Mitrovic. Now, at the time, the top four, they didn't have any games, but Diaz and Darwin, there's no reason to think they weren't going to do very well. So it looked a little bit risky, perhaps. However, I tracked what the points were. So the first game week, of course, the four I took out didn't get any points. The four I brought in got 16 points. And overall, this cost me eight points in hits. And then we've now got four weeks worth of data. The four I took out would have got 17 points. The four I brought in got 87 points. So when you do the maths, that transfer allowing for the hit was net profit 62 points. So if you want to take hits, the way I look at it is take a four week view. And in those four weeks, are you going to make the points back? Now, game week nine, I went for a bit of fun, as I mentioned earlier, because of the whole Vardy, Nottingham Forest, Leicester thing. So when I did this, I said it's probably not going to work out or it may not work out, but I don't mind because I was going for fun here. And also Odegaard and Jesus, we knew we had the blank game week 12 coming up, so I was going to move them on at some point. But obviously, I did move them on too early. So I got rid of Odegaard and Jesus and brought in Billing and Vardy. And the first week that that was the case, game week nine, it wasn't worth it. I was two points down already. Next week, the two I brought in were two points better off. Last week, the two I'd got rid of were three points better off. So there's only one week left to do this, but I've already got rid of Vardy. So as it happens, at the moment, the ones I brought in got 24 points. The ones I got rid of would have got 27 points. And I paid four points for the privilege. So this was not worth it by seven points. But I did know that it was a bad transfer. I just wanted to do it. Game week 10. And remember, the whole point of me saying this is take hits. It's totally worth it, honestly. So I got rid of uh, Trent and De Silva. Trent was not injured at this time. But that's because I wanted Zaha in. So I had to get rid of Trent to finance Zaha. So Trent into Silva for Smith of Bournemouth and Zaha. And the points they got in game week 10 were one and seven, then two and four. So at the moment, the two players I brought in have got 11 points. The two players I let go got three points. So I'm up four so far on this, but we've got another two weeks left yet. So we need to see what happens. It may be Liverpool have turned the corner and Trent is going to be ridiculous from now on. So we don't know where that's going. Last game week, when I released the video, I said I wasn't going to do any transfers, but then it turned out James was going to be out. So I replaced James with Dunk. Now, there are several content creators online, on um, Twitter, but also on YouTube, going for Crystal Palace defenders. 
And although between now and the World Cup, Crystal Palace are probably going to keep a lot more clean sheets, that seemed like the wrong move to me because I only needed somebody for game week 12. And I thought Brighton had a better chance to keep a clean sheet against Forest than Palace did against Wolves. So I brought in Dunk. And as it turns out, it was the right move because the game was last night and Dunk got me eight points. So that was nice. So for all those that got Palace defenders and it was just for the one week, that was a shame. But it's... I'm probably not going to play Dunk again unless I have injuries, but he's just going to sit on my bench. So this was a, a move for one week, but it cost me nothing. So I'll not be tracking this. This week I took two hits. Um, so Madison's not playing this week. So I'm moving him on and I'm not going to bring him back before the World Cup. And I got in Salah. And then I moved on Vardy and I brought in Solanke for Bournemouth. So there's four websites I sometimes look at to look at predicted points and they are Fancy Football Hub and I don't have any affiliation with any of these so I don't get any kickback if you happen to go to these. Fancy Football Scout, FPL Form and FPL Game Week and I'll leave links to these down below so absolutely check these sites out. And FPL Form is a free one and it's got loads of stats on so it's, I really like that one. So what I do each week, I look at the predicted points for the players I'm taking out and the predicted points for the players I'm bringing in. And I try and take a four week view. But because I actually made this video after the deadline, I couldn't get all the points for all the players, but I managed to get some. So for Fancy Football Hub, the two players I'm taking out over the next four weeks have got a predicted point score of 21.7. The two I'm bringing in are 47.4. So that's easily worth it. Fancy Football Scout has it as 20.9 and 42.3. Now I've put an asterisk by FPL form because I could only get three weeks worth of data because they'd already removed game week 12 because game week 12 had started. But even allowing for that, there's an eight point swing, so it's still worth it. An FPL game week, for some strange reason, I couldn't get Madison's score up. I don't know if it was a little glitch if I was doing something wrong. So I've only got Vardy's score for the next three game weeks as well, which is 13.4. So they quite fancy Vardy to do well. Uh, and so it's kind of a bit meaningless showing the last game score, other than to say FPL game week the next three weeks seems to think that Salah and Solanke could get 34.6 points. So however you look at it, if there aren't injuries and something really strange doesn't happen, this was a worthwhile transfer for me to do. So for game week 12, the team that I have fielded is Ward in goal. It's quite easy because I've only got 11 playing players. There's no bench decisions to make. Perisic. Now, Conte in his press conference said he may play Perisic up front as a striker, as a forward. He's done that before. So that's great. <laughs> so that means I've kind of got an extra striker and it's Perisic. And he is a very good player. The, the thing with Perisic is the minutes risks. And so whenever you play him, you're always risking getting one point. Then I've got Dunk, who's already played. He got me eight points. Trippier, he is such a solid player. He he scores between five and eight so often. So he's just great to tick along and just always have him in the team. Smith, one of my three Bolton players I'm playing this week. They're home to Southampton. My nearest team growing up was Pompey. And Pompey's big rival is Southampton. So it means this week I can cheer on Bournemouth because they're playing Southampton, which is the polite way to say their name. Zaha. He was at home to Wolves. Lots of people had him, so I kind of had to have him. I brought him in, as you know, and I think game week eight, he scored last night, so that was nice. Salah, very highly owned now. I was initially thinking bring him in and I may move him on because I wanted Saka and Foden, but I may have to keep Salah because so many people are going to have Salah. So by getting Salah in, I don't think I can comfortably get in Saka and Foden without making too many changes. And I need to be careful what hits I take now because there's only four weeks left before the World Cup. But I think it's probably going to be worth me keeping Salah. So I need to change my plans a little bit. I've got Bowen away to Liverpool. Maybe the last week for him, but he is home to Bournemouth, I think, next week. So I'm not sure about him yet. And then Billing, my second Bournemouth player. Billing is also playing as a forward, it seems. Salah's playing as a forward and then Mitrovic of course is playing as a forward home to Aston Villa and I got Solanke home to Southampton so I've kind of got five forwards potentially playing if you count Perisic, Bowen and Billing as forwards and Salah, oh that's six, I've kind of got six forwards I know Salah's on the wing and people give him 
different phrases, whether it's a forward striker and all this sort of stuff. But basically, he's at the pitch right near the goal, about to punt it in. Uh, Zaha is definitely further back, so he I wouldn't count him as a forward in that sense. So anyway, that's just me rambling on about my team for game week 12. I'm hoping for a good score, or at least a good score relative to a lot of the other people's scores. A lot of teams can't get 11 players out this week, so I'm hoping this week is going to be a green arrow for me. And on the bench, I got four guys that aren't playing. So there we have it. There's my slightly delayed game week 12 video. Thank you everyone who's joined the league and everyone who gives likes and comments on these videos. <laughs> Sorry about it being late. It was it was really difficult for me. I was busy all weekend and I couldn't get this video up. And I don't know if I'm going to manage it for the next game week either because it's such a tight turnaround as well. But we'll see what I can do. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.